In this video, we demonstrate GitHub Projects, a Kanban tool for software development projects where you can list the tasks of the project and track their progress. GitHub Projects is similar to um, a very widely used tool called Trello, which is another Kanban tool that looks very similar. In GitHub Projects, you organize the phases of the task of your software development. In this example, we have a phase called Backlog, a phase called To-Do, a phase called In Progress, a phase called Blocked, and a phase called Done. And the idea is that the tasks of your projects all start off in the backlog. The backlog are things you might get to, you don't know if you're going to get to them, but they are various things that you think you might want to do. The to-do phase of a task is, this is going to get done, but no one started it yet. The in progress is that a task is in progress, someone's working on it. The blocked column is for a task that's been started, but can't, can't go on further until something happens, it's blocked for some reason. And then finally, when a task is done, it moves to the done column. And the way GitHub Projects works is these individual tasks are called cards. And a card can be moved. You can move it up or down to indicate its priority. So typically the things at the top are high priority. Cards can be moved when they move to a phase. So if we're going to start on the product idea, or we want to start on it soon, we'll move it to the to-do phase. Once it actually starts, you can move the card over to in progress. And typically then what you do is you edit the card and you say who's working on it by using their GitHub username. So in this case, V. Wolf has started working on the product idea document. If other people join and work on it with the teammate, then you can list them here as well. So let's put our card back and demonstrate another part of cards. So when you take a card, say the prototype card, let's say it's here in to-do, and we want to move it into progress. We're ready to start prototyping. Sometimes you can break cards up. So for instance, if we want the prototype card, we're beating, maybe making a prototype of a website. We want to break it into each of the individual pages of the website. You can make a new card for that. So if you move over here under in progress we can make a new one saying um, home page um, create home page and then we can add another card to create um, frequently asked questions page And another card to create the contacts page. And then individual people who are working on these pages can add their names to it. As a page is completed, it gets moved to done. So note that we can break up tasks, like in this case creating the prototype of a website, into subtasks that people are actually working on. And in this case, um, once we've created it into a, a subtask, we kind of leave it here. Um, and as the subtasks are all completed, then we have created, we've also completed the prototype. So let's see how to create a GitHub project. If you go to your main GitHub page by clicking on your icon in the upper left corner, you'll see your repositories listed here. If you want to create a project under, say, this repository, you click on the repository. And you'll see across the top things that are unique to that repository, including the project plan for that repository. So to create a GitHub project for this repository, you click on Projects, and you create a new project. You name your project, usually the name of the company or the name of the product. Um, And then you're allowed to add columns. 
You can add any columns that are meaningful. Sometimes your company will tell you what columns to add because it's it's the same in all, in all projects. If you're in a class, maybe your teacher will tell you what columns to add. So we're going to add a column for the backlog. And that's typically the first column on the left where you collect the tasks that might or might not get done. So I'll create the backlog column. And there it is. Now I'll add a new column. Very typically in Kanban projects you'll have a to-do column. And the to-do column, remember, is then you move things from the backlog. Again, the backlog is things you might get to. To-do are things you're going to get to. Then you're going to have a um, in-progress column. Create the column. So we can move tasks from to-do to in-progress when people are actually working on them. Uh, you Optionally, you can add a blocked column. Not all Kanbans do this, but a blocked column allows you to show what tasks are held up because it, the task is waiting for something. So we'll create that. And finally, you want to have a column to show what things you've completed. So these are typical columns, and they're done just simply by adding columns. Now we'll go on to add cards. To add a card to a column, you hit the plus sign here. Add a note. Notes and cards are, are, are equivalent. So we, we'll click, click on the plus, and we'll add a note for the first thing we might do in a product development. So in a product development, maybe, maybe the first thing we're going to do is to create a product idea. Some kind of a document that describes the product idea after brainstorming and after the ideation process. Now. You could edit this note and add more detail. Right now it only has a title. But if you click on this and add Edit Note, you can put more description in here about what, what has to be done on the project. And that depends on what the task is. So we won't do that now, but note that you can edit it. You can, once it gets moving in progress, you can assign it to people. So you can edit the notes. So go ahead and create other cards. Um, it depends on your, your software development project plan. But you might, for instance, um, have a plan to do some user research to see what kind of people are going to be using your product. And then once you've done user research, you might do some what are called persona grids, where you um, list the characteristics of a typical class of users, like young people or professionals or uh, retired people, whatever your, your demographics that you're trying to reach. You might want to create what's called a persona grid for them. So let's add that. Um, once you're ready and have an idea for your product and you who know who your users are, you can start to design it. So one technique that's often used is something called a design challenge um, statement. So maybe the team wants to do that. And then once the design challenge statement is done, maybe they're ready to start kind of laying out their product. Typically in software we do something called a wireframe, where a wireframe shows the screens of the app or the pages of the website and how a user might go between them, but without all of the nice user interface, the nice colors and graphics. Just a basic layout of screens of the app or pages of the web of the um, website. So we'll do a wireframe. Um, might do some coding of some form. Um, so let's just put, put the word prototype in here. That's creating using coding to create a prototype, something actual working app or working website. Um, perhaps we'll do some something called A/B testing, where we test different versions of the product to see what works best with our users. Maybe we'll do some analytics on the use of the product once it's released, or at least a uh, beta or early version is released. And then maybe we'll do a final software release um, of the product itself. Now note these are in the wrong order, so you then would have to use um, the dragging to reorganize them. Product ID is probably the first thing you're going to do. And you can drag these around to get the priority order in the backlog. Then remember, once you get the kind of overall picture of the project, project, you say, what things are we really going to do? Now, you may get to things in the backlog that you're not going to do, but we're, we're going to be doing a product idea. Okay? Um, 
we will be doing user research. So most of these things here in the backlog are going to get moved over to to do. So we'll move we'll to persona grids, uh, challenge statement, wireframe, prototype, um, A/B testing, analytics, and a release. And now notice that the to dos are prioritized. And the team can decide to change the priority order. If it's more important to do persona grid before user research, you could move that up in the priority. Then the idea is team members come and they, if they have some time to do some work, they look at what's next to do. And if they have capacity to work and, and skill set to work on the product idea, they move it over to in progress, they edit it, and that they, they say that they are working on it and perhaps they no add a note about what they're doing. Um, capturing, team brainstorming into a rough um, document. And as progress is made, more notes can be put into the card. If for some reason uh, the, product become, the product idea becomes blocked, you move it over to blocked, and you would want to add a reason as to why it's been blocked. And once that reason is um, cleared, you can move it back to in progress. Finish the product idea document. And once it's finished, it can be moved over to done. And it's possible to have more than one thing in progress because so, you have a team of people. So maybe some people in the team are working on persona grids, and some people are on the team are working on user research. So both of those would be in the in progress. So this is how you create and use a GitHub project to keep track of the software development phases and tasks in creating your product.